In this lesson on circle geometry, we are going to have a look at theorem 4. Theorem 4. Angles at the circumference, and in this case that will be B and C, subtended by the same arc, in our case A, B, or even a chord between A and B, are equal. The reason for this theorem is angles in the same circle segment. And this comes from the chord that can be drawn. The chord divides the circle into a major and a minor segment. And these two angles are both in the same segment. Example 1. Determine the size of x. If we go and have a look at our picture, we can see that x is formed from arc DG. And from that arc DG, I can also form angle E, which is also on the circumference. And that means that angle E will be the same size as angle F, which will be X. But now to calculate X, we need to use some previous knowledge and realize that we were given parallel lines. And where we have parallel lines and we can form an N or a Z, we have alternating angles, which means angle E and angle G are the same size, and that means X will be 35. So to write this down, I'm going to start with my parallel lines and say that angle E is equal to angle G, which is 35 degrees, and my reason for that, my parallel lines and alternating angles. Now I can continue and say that angle F is equal to angle E, and my reason for that is my new theorem, angles in the same circle segment, and therefore I can say that F, which is also X, is 35 degrees. Example 2, determine the size of X. Now for this one I want you to take a few moments and first think what you would say the size of X is. Now, if you do not look carefully at this picture, you might want to say that X is 20. Angle X is formed from arc AB. From arc AB, I can also form angle C. But angle C is on the circumference and angle O is at the center, which means this is actually theorem 2. And that says the angle at the center is twice the angle on the circumference. So you need to realize that every single word of a theorem is important. And here you have to realize that it's not two angles on the circumference, but one on the circumference and one at the center. So I can write that X will be twice the size of angle C, which means X will be 2 times 20, and that means X is 40. My reason for saying x is 2 times angle c is angle at the center twice the angle at the circumference. Example 3. Determine the size of x, y and z. In this example we are starting to combine all our theorems. If we have a look at x, we will see that x is formed or subtended from arc AB. From arc AB, I can also form an angle at the center, which is the 88 degrees. So I can say that angle X is half that of the angle at the center. My reason for that, angle at the center is twice the angle on the circumference. And that means that X is 44 degrees. 
If we now move on to Y, we can see that angle Y forms part of the whole angle D. And the whole angle D is 90 degrees. The reason for that, angle D is formed or subtended by AC, and AC is the diameter of the circle. So I can write that the whole of angle D is 90 degrees. My reason for that, angle in a semicircle. Angle D consists of angle X and Y, which will then have to be 90. And that means Y is 90 degrees minus X, which is 44. And Y will then be 46 degrees. And when I now move on to Z, I will see that angle Z is subtended by arc BC. And from arc BC, I can also form angle Y, which means they will be the same size. So angle Z is equal to angle Y, which is equal to 46 degrees. And my reason for that, there are angles in the same circle segment.